Hey guys, Chitu Fahadeng is here to follow last week's focus with another community suggestion regarding single focus solutions. Weeks ago, I asked on Instagram what people would like to see here. Chase McCaffrey showed up with a full-blown, ready-to-go focuser design for super cheap. So that's what we're doing today. That's a single focus solution for double focus setups. I also gotta thank Landon Lacey who managed to grab one of these wide angle adapters for me when the seller would not ship to Canada. If you're down for the cheapest focuser around, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. This will unlock the files in the description of this video. Just kidding, had to try. The files are free for everyone. Will you like the video now? Thank you. In this episode, I'll show you exactly what parts you'll need for the build, where to find them, and a step-by-step -step process on how to assemble the whole thing, plus a handful of test shots. The whole shopping list should cost you less than 100 bucks, and I'll use some glue on this one, but I improved McCaffrey's tutorial with a partially reversible process using 3D prints, so if you tank one, you can always get the glass out safely. Let's get started. The key component for this build is the Mercury 72 millimeters, 0.45 times macro wide angle adapter. These are super random on eBay and the generic name makes me think that other 0.45 times macro wide angle adapters would be compatible with this build. I just didn't have a chance to try other models. The Mercury comes in 52, 58, and 72 millimeter sizes. Make sure you get the 72 millimeter version for the best coverage. They range from 10 bucks to 60 and pop at random on eBay. So keep watching them and you'll eventually find a good deal. I got two, one for 50 and one for 15. The second thing you'll need is a M65 helicoid, the 17 to 31 millimeters type. These can range from 20 to 35 bucks on eBay. Uh, the ones with brass threads perform better, although they're on the pricier side of the spectrum. Downside, they focus in the opposite direction, Nikon style. I guess we'll have to live with that. The original tutorial used step rings and epoxy, but I managed to do 3D models of everything, so it's cheaper and easier to build. The link to the parts is in the description. Inside the zip file are three pieces. This one is going to hold the rear element. Um, this one is for the front. And the last one is an adapter from M65 to 77 millimeter threads. The first step is to harvest the glass from the mercury. The adapter unscrews in the middle and each of the two elements has a locking ring that you can remove. So I'm going to unscrew this and you can see that there's a locking ring here and another locking ring here that we can remove. So I'm gonna do that and you might be able to see that there's lots of fingerprints in here. Those are all mine from previous attempts. So I'm using a lens wrench and just twisting this off. So we set these aside and here's the glass. Very dusty and very full of fingerprints. I'm gonna set it aside as well. This body can go. Now I'm gonna take out the rear element and just repeat the process. So 
here's our locking ring. And here's our rear element. And it's important to remember that the rounder, more bubbly side is what faces up. So I'm gonna set off to the side. I'm just using my hands, but I'm gonna clean everything afterwards. So to control veiling flare, we're gonna blacken the edges of the rear element. And a black marker will work just fine, like what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna just go around the edges here. This is what we're going with. The front element already has it, so we don't need to add any more. Uh, this will help us control veiling flare. Before we start gluing things together, make sure your prints are accurate. Check if the glass fits inside. So I'm gonna do dropping this in here. And it does fit, fit neatly inside. And also check the threads. Just get it started and you should be able. So I can feel it's going, which means that the threads are okay. I'm gonna take it out because this is quite time consuming. And I don't wanna get it right now. Taking the sound. The same applies for the rear element. I had to send a bunch, but it does sit in here. And this guy is gonna go into this. So everything is working as it should. So yeah, the locking ring for the rear element should be able to screw without a hitch and the locking ring for the front element should fit the front neatly as well. I messed up my M65 threads, so these don't actually go in here and I just sanded the whole thing and kind of, like, I'm gonna push it into place. Out of all the pieces, uh, this one is the least concerning about errors and hopefully yours will come out better than mine. It's good enough, I'll make it better later. Now it's glue time. The rear piece should fit neatly inside the helicoid, so I'm just gonna push it back all the way, and it fits flush with the back here. Ignore this part. I'm gonna be using a bit of super glue, and so just to make sure it doesn't move anywhere as I'm focusing around, and then I'm gonna repeat the process for the front print. So I'm gonna use a little bit of super glue, I'm gonna put it on the, this area here and then push the element from the inside. Let's do that. in here and push it down all the way just to make sure it sits there with the glue you can see there's a little bit coming off but I'm gonna keep the pressure here just to make sure it sticks uh, so this glue is gonna take a little bit and then we're gonna do the same for the front so I'm gonna glue this area on the front here and I'm just gonna put the glue on this I think. Yeah, I'm just gonna put the glue here. And this is a very tight fit. I'm putting glue. Around. And then close the glue. Since this is very tight, I'm gonna have to push it in. My files. Oh yeah. So 
now all the parts are here. This is our whole glue build. And this is gonna have to sit for a little bit and we'll come back to later. Super glue has a nasty habit of creating fog on grease. So make sure you clean the elements very well before you put them in. Just in case the glue is not completely dry. Uh, but after the glue is dry, it is time to add the glass and the locking rings. So gently place the rear element in. I'm gonna pick it up here. Pick it up upside down. So make sure that the bubbly side is facing up. So this is the more curved side. This is gonna be facing up. So I'm gonna pick it up and kind of put this all here. Flip it up so it sits at the back there. Flush against the bottom and drop in the step ring. Now I'm gonna use the lens wrench to tighten it up. Uh, so we're using the ring that we removed from the original uh, housing to secure it to the 3D print. And just make sure it's not tilted. Okay, so we secured the rear element. And now we're gonna do the same for the front element. I'm gonna drop this in. So this fits in neatly. And we're gonna add this 82 millimeter ring to lock the front threads. Again, make sure it's not skewed, that the threads are not crossed. So just take your time. And as soon as you have it, you can use the lens wrench to kind of just screw it in all the way. It always has resistance until it's it fits perfectly. And as soon as it fits perfectly, it's the easiest thing. Yeah. I'm gonna close this. Lovely sounds. After that, you're ready to mount it and start shooting. You get infinity focus when the helicoid is compressed and focus closer as you extend it. This is some of the stuff that I shot with it. It's a good fit for smaller scopes, for sure, like pros cars and sand cars and koas. If you're a member of the channel, I'm making a video with a more technical review um, of performance, vignetting, sharpness, and flares. You can join through the button below or the link in the description. Memberships cost as little as $2.99 and bring you exclusive content. They also make a big difference for me, uh, the guy doing all of this out of pure goodwill. So join now. How do you like this focuser? Let me know in the comments below. I love that it's pretty easy to make and it does an okay job, it's super cheap. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and if you wanna see more things about single focus solutions and variable diopters, this is the time. This month is entirely about the subject, so subscribe to the channel. I hope you learned something new today and thank you for hanging out. I'm Chitfa Haddings and I'll see you next week.